Hi everyone. Um, I'm here today. We're going to paint the Good Day Sunshine door crown. And I've started off this little door crown available from Cabin Crafters. You might find it with some of the other wood cutters. It's about 13 and a three quarter inches wide by eight and three quarter inch tall. Now you can also adapt this design to just about any other surface that's of a similar size. I'm using Traditions paints, but I've given you some just basic conversions that you can use any brand of paint. These are just very simple, basic colors. The first thing we're painting is the, well first let me say that the, the board I've sealed it with a multi-purpose sealer and sanded it and transferred the basic design outlines. And then I'm painting in these little sections of blue sky with a blue mix that I've made from Traditions Thalo Blue to one part of the blue to two parts of white. You can vary that mix a little bit if you want, you know, just to change the shade of blue. But this just makes a real nice bright sky blue. And as I'm painting this in these sections, I'm starting out with the blue mix and a half inch angular brush and filling in the edges of each of the triangular shapes and then as I work out towards the wider section I'm adding some blue I'm adding some white and then slip slapping that back into the blue color to just get a little variation of a lighter blue into the darker blue So here we are, we're using the, the chisel edge of the brush to outline in this triangular shape. I'm working up on the chisel edge and just pulling right along that line. And then filling in with the, the basic blue mix about halfway up. And then we're going to pick up some white on the brush. If you've got too much blue, just wipe it off. So I'm picking up some white here and then I'm going to slip slap that back in and blend it into the blue. You have to work fairly quickly. Uh, I find the Traditions paint stay open a little longer than some of the other acrylics. But also on the um, sealed surface, it won't absorb the moisture out of your paint so quickly either. So it'll stay open a little longer. So just softly blend that white and the blue back together and be sure to work out over the edges of your board so that you have all those side edges finished by the time you get finished painting. So just continue along and paint in all the blue sky. After I finished painting my blue sky, I realized some of the points of my sun rays didn't come to a nice sharp little point. So I'm going back here and just curving those in a little bit more so that they aren't flat on the ends. So you see I'm just filling that that end to come to a, um, a nice little pointed edge. Next we're going to work on our sun's face and I'm using Indian yellow here. 
and we're going to use the half inch angle brush and work some of this Indian yellow, which is a kind of a warm orange yellow, out along the outer, outer edge of the, the sun's face, just working right up to the, the line. So you're going to fill in a band maybe, maybe an inch or so wide. And again, I'm working wet on wet, so um, the, on the sealed surface, the Traditions paints do stay moist for a little while. I'm, at the moment, I'm not using any kind of extender or blending medium or anything. I'm just using just a little bit of, you know, my brush is damp to start with. just has a little bit of water in, in it. So once we've got that band in, just kind of keep a soft edge on the inside and a nice sharp edge along the outside. Then we're going to use some Hansa yellow, which is kind of a cool lemon yellow color. You can see on the palette how much cooler the yellow looks than that orange yellow of the Indian yellow. So I'm going to put the, the I'm saying lemon yellow, but really it's Hansa yellow towards the center and just softly blend that back out into the Indian yellow. And again, the paint's just wet enough that they'll blend together. And I've traced down my son's face previously. You can still see it through these yellow colors. The, the yellows tend to be rather transparent. So you can either trace your design down before you paint it or wait until after it's painted and dried. I'm going to pick up some white on my brush and lighten the center of that face just a little bit more. Just making sure we have a nice wet application to blend into. And as I said, the yellows are a little transparent, so you can add some other layers. So again, putting some white in the center, and I work in kind of a crisscross X pattern to, to blend that back into the yellows.
Next we're going to do our, our sun's rays and we're going to use three colors for the rays. We're going to use naphthol red which is just a bright red so any bright red that you want to use is okay. And again I'm still using the half inch angle brush and I'm sort of side loading the red right up against the sun's face. I'm going to work that out a little ways then pick up some of the Indian yellow, which is our orange yellow, and blend that back into the red through the middle section of the leaf. Or I, I say leaf, but these are sun rays or petals, if you want to think of this as a sunflower. And we want that yellow to come out towards the outer tip. And then we're going to pick up some lemon yellow and put that out on the farthest edge right out to the point. So you want these um, sun rays to be kind of a gradation of color from red at the middle or up against the sun's face and then gradually transition into an orange and then to the yellow out at the tip. So you're going to work each of the sun rays in the same manner. Sometimes I have to stop and just ponder it a second as I decide where I need to add some more color and I think we need to put a little bit more yellow into this this ray. So now we're going to go on and do the others in the same way. Start with red close to the sun's face you get too much paint on your brush just blot it off or pinch it out in a paper towel. Uh, then we're going to pick up the Indian yellow and blend that back into the red. You always want to blend these colors with your brush straddling the colors. So you'll see my brush is always has the chisel edge towards the top to the side of the petal. I would never want to turn the brush and have the straight edge horizontal across the petal. And add some of the lemon yellow to the outer tip. And we'll just continue on doing each of these petals the same way.
Next we're going to paint in our eyes and I'm using just a small round brush like a two or a four and we're going to fill in the eyes with white. I've got my outline here that's showing through my base coats of yellow but um, if yours doesn't you could be sure to transfer your facial features before you start this. You want to try to keep your eyes very similar in size and shape. And I know that's sometimes easier said than done. So I usually outline the eye first and then go back and fill it in with white. Even looking at these, I can tell the one on the right looks a little bigger and of course it's whiter so we need to just fiddle with this just a little bit so they look even. Okay, I'm going to do a second second layer of white over these. And again, just trying to refine the shape a little bit and just make sure they have an even base coat. While our eyes are drying, we're going to do our nose, and I'm using just a quarter inch angle brush, some red brush mixed with a little bit of white to make a pink. We're going to float this just along the top of edge of the nose. This is sort of a little C shape. Uh, it seems a little dry. Add a little bit more water to your brush. Just a little hint of a nose. Then using the same little quarter inch angle, we're going to float some white just under the eye on each side. 
just give a little highlight to the top of that cheek or eyelid. And then we're going to shade underneath the mouth. I'm using, again, the quarter inch angle brush, a little bit of red brush mix with some Indian yellow. And we're going to float that just along each side underneath the mouth and to the side of the mouth. I decided after doing that I thought the nose was a little too cool pink so I'm brushing a little this over the nose also to warm it up. It's still pinker than the shading under the mouth but it's warmer. We're going to fill in the eye or the iris of the eye with our blue and I'm using like a two or a four round brush. I had a little bit too much water in the brush and it kind of came down and puddled, so I had to wipe that up. But your iris is kind of a round ball within the eye. So if you think of it as a circle, the circle would really extend beyond the eyelid. So the top and bottom of the iris are going to be flattened just a little bit. And you want a little bit of the, kind of a little triangle, triangle of the white of the eye to show on either side in the corners. Again, we want to try to keep these irises similar in size and shape. This time I think my left arms, the right looks a little smaller. So I'm just going to come up and add a little bit to the top here. I'm going to strengthen that white under the eye a little bit by just kind of softly using the tip of the round brush to just smudge some white right along the bottom of that eyelid. Now we're going to work on the cheeks and I'm using a number 18 short round brush. This, these are my favorite brushes for dry brushing and I'm adding a little bit of red. You want to be sure this red has really worked into the brush well. You don't want any clumps. And you're going to work in a circular motion, starting at the center of the cheek and working out so that you have a soft edge on the outer edge. I'm starting to run out of paint, so I'll try to pick some of it up on my palette, see if I can get enough to finish. And these are really bright rosy cheeks on this sun. Pick up a little bit more paint. Again, really scrubbing it into the palette so it blends through that brush. I've got brown paper on my table, so I'm 
kind of wiping up excess off on it, but you could also do that on a paper towel. You just don't want any clumps of paint to come down once you apply it to the cheeks. Okay, now we're going to start stenciling some butterflies on our background. So I've got this Lori Smelts butterfly stencil that has just a variety of shapes and sizes of butterflies. And we're going to keep these very close to the background color. So we're going to use the phthalo blue that we use to mix our blue background. But we're going to use it straight out of the bottle so it's a little darker. So this will be like a blue on blue color for the butterflies. So I'm using, again, one of the short round brushes as a stencil brush. And I'm just, again, working these stencils, kind of stenciling the butterflies in a circular motion. I just want them a little darker than my blue background so they show up. And so you're just going to randomly place these butterflies. Pick some different shapes and sizes. and position them around the background. I'm leaving the space on the left, the set between the second and third petal, I guess, because I'm going to put a big butterfly in there later. It will be kind of a feature butterfly. So you can add as many or as few of these blue butterflies as you want. They're just very simple, just kind of silhouettes. Now these dry brushes, I never put them in water. I always wipe as much paint out of them as I can on the on a paper towel and clean them with a hand sanitizer. So I usually have several of these brushes that I'm working with. Now I switch to another one and I'm going to stencil the little bodies in the butterflies with white. So you need a clean brush so you don't end up with a, a blue or a lighter blue white. And we're just picking some different size bodies that fit the, the butterfly and stenciling in little white. Bodies for them. Okay, we're done with this short segment and you can catch up to here and then move on to part two of our video.